Welcome to the Dan and Broad Show. We are here for the first time in seven years to talk about this Eagles W yesterday. Nick Foles. Yes, I said it. Nick Foles. I can't be, I can't believe this fan base. I don't want to go there, though, Dan. I don't want to go there. What are your thoughts about last night's game? It was tremendous. Yes, Nick Foles saved the day. What do you think? I mean, they kept the season alive. That's all you can really ask for, right? They're giving themselves an opportunity. They got a big – the game next week's the big one. If they win next week, they're going to win out, and then really you're just going to be able to sit back and hope somebody else loses. So yes. they put themselves in a position where if they win this game next week, they're in the best position they could possibly be in. But analyzing this game last night, they came one fumble short of fumbling this football game the same way yes. they have several other football games this season. So I don't actually think last night's game was too far off than every other game the rest of the year. Yeah, see, I praise Jim Schwartz for what he did this season, or, or this game, not this season, not this season. This game – through three and a half quarters, he brought the blitz at the right time. He had pressure. He played well. He dropped a lot of guys back in coverage. But we were one muff fumble away from blowing a 17-point lead in the fourth quarter again. And yep. it goes unnoticed. But that that it was this close, and people are forgetting that. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It goes unnoticed because they won the football game. If they would have right. just made that one play in the Tennessee game, Nobody would have cared about it. If they would have made that one play in the Carolina game, no one would have cared about it. They won the football game, so now we have this mad scramble of Team Wentz, Team Foles. I'm not partaking in this nonsense at all. I'm, t I'm, I'm Team Wentz, but I love Nick Foles. Like, I, I'm it's, not. It's I'm, dude, I'm Team so Eagles. Obvious. I agree, but, dude, to tell me that we should let Carson Wentz walk is ridiculous, and people think that. No, 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 no. We're not addressing they those do. people today. Those people oh, got okay. – I don't have no time for those people. <laughs> okay. Well, how about this? I think Doug Peterson called a game uh, – everyone on this team, everyone, had their best game this year. I yeah. think Carson – or um, no, Doug Peterson, I think he called his best game of the year. And is that because Nick Foles is in there? Like, do you think because we have a different quarterback, he changed the way he prepared and called this game? Yeah, uh, my buddy Sal Pal was talking about this on the radio earlier. Doug Peterson, maybe he just plays – he his play calling seems to be better when he's running a more simple offense, and that's what Nick Foles is. He's a more simple, slow-paced offense. Doug Peterson, so far in his career with the Eagles, he has, played, he, he has clearly been better in the games with Nick Foles versus the games with Wentz. I don't think that yeah. that's a knock on Wentz, though. I just think that's a totally a Doug Peterson thing. But people make that about Wentz. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that. It's just, uh, it's frustrating. I don't want to do it, though. I don't want to do it. Because I'm happy. It's not like I was sitting there watching the game yesterday. And I want Foles to stink so everyone stops. Like, I'm, I'm embracing this magical ride of Nick Foles. This guy is a, is a, is, has been sent from God. Seriously. <laughs> the, the football gods... Is, is Nick Foles right now. It's amazing the ride that this guy has been on. He's already let's got the statue. The he already has the statue. He does. Offensive line, let's do it, because they looked great yeah. last night. Best game we've seen this year. By far. They By shut far. Aaron Donald down to nothing. Yeah, no one, and you don't do that. Even when no, he's no getting double teamed, his, his percentages, even when he's getting double teamed, are insane. They just flat out played great football last night. All across the line. Derek, Brandon Brooks played good last night. Jason Kelsey played phenomenal last night. If it, it, yeah, if I remember correctly, did he have one hit on Nick Foles when he was releasing the ball on one of those big bombs? Unless that was Sue. I didn't one look of, at he, it. He got hit twice. But, yeah. I mean, to hold Aaron Donald to that type of numbers, it's crazy. Guess who, guess who outplayed him? Fletcher Cox, baby. Fletcher Cox, my man. I love when he gets the hit on the quarterback and he's on the ground and he's crawling. <laughs> he put the he, he. I don't know if you've seen the play or not. He had a he had a pass rush early in the game where he actually had a one arm bull rush and he put their and center so on his shoulder blades. He let this feet yeah. on his shoulder blades with one arm, one dude, arm. Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett played great. This dude, this dude is a the shoulder padless Michael Bennett. This guy. And even Avante Maddox. Hold on. Have we, have you heard anything bad about Michael Bennett in the locker room this season? No. I haven't heard a peep. Let's say. 
I haven't yeah. heard of Peep. Nope, nope, not at all. So, oh. Alshon Jeffrey gets used a little bit. And, yeah, I think one of Wentz's knock this year was he was staring down Ertz. We saw a little bit more of the offense being used all around with Golden Tate, Alshon, Nelson Aguilar. I just think that we used our options more and scanned the field more. Would you say that that definitely happened offensively? Yeah, Al- Alshon and Foles seem to have a really good connection. That's, that's Carson Wentz's Ertz, if you will. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. And I think a big factor in this that a lot of people don't talk about is Al- Alshon was hurt at the beginning of the year. He didn't have like a normal off season or training camp. He right. he came into the season banged up, and then he had a coaching change three weeks in. I I think he would be perfectly fine. I think him and Wentz are going to be great together. But I do I do love to see him and him him and Foles. They do air it out. Foles airs it out to Alshon a lot more than Wentz does, and it works. Yeah, he had some good throws, even the ones where. Ertz was in the end zone, and that one got deflected by a corner. That was a really nice throw. There, Nick Foles played well. Like you can't deny it, whether you're a Wentz guy or a Foles guy, he played well, and I want that to happen regardless. But yeah. what do you think about Doug Peterson's decision with a minute and thirteen seconds left to go for the kick, the field goal to go up ten, fifty-three yarder? I'm all in on it. Yeah, I, I mean that's not. If it was sixty, I'd say Doug, come on, let's think about this. 53, uh, you go, you, you ice the game, you go for it. Yeah, no, I was, I'm kicking the field goal there too, but I I was on the edge of my seat, bro. It's like, I'm, it got, wait, I'm, the prevent D, we talked about it. The prevent D has to stop. It It, it doesn't work. We got lucky. We got they lucky. I'm telling you right now, the Rams would have got all the way down the field and would have had a play at the goal line, even from the 20. I'm telling you, our prevent defense prevents absolutely nothing. Absolutely not. And it prevented nothing in the fourth quarter. Jared Goff would have tied that game if it wasn't for the fumble. And it still came down to the last play. The yeah. very last play. I, if you ha- right. if you make that field goal, the game's over. And Jake Elliott's banged that field goal time and time again. So, I'm all on. So, what, what do you think of this Eagles team? Like, do you see this team being able to beat Houston, beat the Redskins? If we make the playoffs, what do you see out of this team? This team's okay. definitely playing more confident. They're playing more as a team. Even though this defense is banged up, you know what? Rasul Douglas has stepped up big time. You, maybe you get some guys back. Corey Graham, he had a nice interception, although I, I don't love him. But, you know, he played well. LeBlanc was seriously making tackles left and right, even though we're joking about Joey from Friends. He was out there making hard contact. This team is playing more of a, of a of just better football. They are. They're playing better football. Um, I, I'm a game-to-game kind of guy. Me too. Right so, now you have to. Well, this is the thing. If you're asking me, what what are we going to look like if we get in the playoffs? The only way we get in the playoffs is if we win out. So in this hypothetical situation, we will have finished the season on a win streak with two wins against two playoff teams. And in this situation, we would technically be red hot, would we not? Yeah. The Rams and the Saints have honestly been hiccups. They've, they've shown hiccups the last couple weeks. I'm not saying the Eagles are going back to L.A. and winning another game. I'm not saying they're going to New Orleans or Minnesota or wherever it may be and winning a game. But it seems more realistic now than it did a month ago. Yeah, oh, no doubt. We jumped to like 35% chance to make the playoffs. We need the Vikings to lose a game yeah. against either the Lions or the Bears. That's the most realistic thing. Yeah, we're Carolina the plays Vikings the Saints the twice. Yeah, Carolina plays the Saints twice and the Falcons. You'd think they would lose one of those games the way they've been playing. We need yeah. to bank on Minnesota losing one game, and we need to win out. But if if we do, if we do end the season 9-7 and seven and we don't make the playoffs, uh, don't get me wrong, devastated, crushed, easily heartbroken. But it could have been 7-9, and 6-10, and 10, looking back to two weeks ago, and the team responded and put together a 9-7 and seven season. If that is the case without making the playoffs, I mean, I guess I have to tip the cap and say you could have died. You could have went down and died and said this isn't the year. But if they go 9-7 and seven and we don't make the playoffs, I will be devastated, but you have to tip the cap for the locker room staying together. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. I'm totally with you on that. I mean, yeah. hey, you, you're not going to win the Super Bowl every year. You're no, not going to win the Super Bowl every year. Uh, it's a it's sad you know, reality. I hate that mentality. I hate the mentality just as much as you do. But at this time of year, once the door gets shut, what other mindset are you going to have? You just well, got to yeah, wait no, for draft really, to come it, around. It was, the, it was the ugliness of it, and it's the yeah. fact that eight or nine wins gets you in a wild card. And, you know, we were better on paper this year. We Once the season's over, whatever happens, say we don't make it, we can – 
reflect on this season and, and say, okay, this is where the problem lies. Yeah. self Tennessee, fourth and 15 in overtime can't happen, right? You can look at all these games, 17-point lead that we blow. It happened because we did it to ourselves. If it gets to that point, you can look back and say, you know, we did it to ourselves. That's the most stressful part. You keep saying yeah. that. we got to look back on these games. We're going to be talking about these games till like, September. It hurts. But if, but if we finish out hot – and we're nine and seven. Well, I guess the argument then all summer long is going to be the Foles Wentz thing. Let's be real. But you can't bring Foles back. I'm sorry because no. he's thirteen million dollars on the salary cap right now. Someone is going to offer him money in free agency, especially if he finishes the season. If he Foles finishes the back. year on a three game win streak, oh god! After you winning the Super Bowl, <laughs> you can't bring him back. It's all Somebody's about going. Wentz paying him big bucks. He's going to get paid. Yeah, we're going to have to. The thing is, we're going to have to. Build from the draft, and that scares me when you look at Howie Roseman and what we've done in the draft. Because we're going to pay Carson the big time money. We talked about this, even though he's injured and he's been hurt, he's getting big time bucks. You're you're not getting anything different. Yeah, you agree? No, I'm on. I, I totally, completely, yeah, one hundred. We got to build from the draft, and and yeah, we we hit on Derek Barnett. It looks like Avante Maddox is going to be a player, but you look at some of the other draft picks we had, and and not so much. I mean, Sidney Jones to me. Looks like a bum. I know he's hurt, but I, I wouldn't say a bum, but the expectations of we got this first round talent, he's going to be a stud lockdown corner. And it's uh, a shame that they've had, uh, it's a shame that some of these young guys have had so much weight put on their shoulders too because of the injuries. It just makes it so much worse. Yeah. Well, this is Howie Roseman's thing. He likes attacking high ranked players with injuries and get them in the third, fourth, fifth. That's his thing. He likes to try and snag these third, fourth, fifth round guys that aren't panning out. Even Pumphrey, uh, he wasn't hurt, but he didn't pan out. He's good at the seventh rounders. Jalen Mills, Maialata looks like he can be good. But that, that let me go get a hurt guy in the fifth round, who's third round talent. That First round really ceiling. First yeah, round exactly. ceiling. Josh Sweat's another one. He was always injured, and he was supposed to be a legit talent. He, he didn't, you know, he couldn't stay healthy either. Yeah, Freddie. First down, Freddie Mitchell, baby. Oh <laughs> Fred X. Fred X. Bro, it's all you good, though. Let me tell you why. Hold on. Let me tell you why it's all good, bro. It's all good. It's okay. Uh, it's yeah, all right. I'm done with I like what you're doing, but I'm over it. As much as I loved it, I'm over it. See, yesterday, Not over I, had a taste, I had a taste of that. Never. Yesterday, I was watching that game. I, I tweeted, what year is this? It was fun. The team was fun. The defense was there. The offense was moving the ball. Doug Peterson ran the football. I had fun watching that game yesterday for the first time all year. Yeah, that was the first game of the season that I enjoyed watching the game as well. I, I was actually, we were talking, me and my buddy were talking about this. It was the second quarter. And I looked at him and I said, you know what really sucks? They're just not fun to watch right now. Uh, and then the uh, second half, it was a lot better. And it was the most fun game of the year. But they just really haven't been that fun to watch. Yeah, I agree. I mean, so, I'm a diehard. Yeah, I watch like, every minute of every quarter, oh, yeah. and I always will. But there's times where it's up here, and there's times where it's down here. And watching those fourth quarters unfold all season long have been draining. And it's been I hate over to go Nick Foles Wentz right now. But all season long, has there ever been a play for Carson Wentz when Nelson Aguilar and Elshon Jeffrey were both 20 yards past the secondary? I don't I think so. I swear to God, that's never happened. That's never happened, so. dude. Like, I don't come think so. On. Come yeah. on, just for the for the haters out there, I, I, I hate to do it. <laughs> I love Nick Foles. I do. I love him. I love him. I want him to succeed. I want him to play the rest of the season. It's just looking for the future. I can't believe some of the things I'm hearing. It's all right. Well, we're going to be all right because we're going to beat Houston next week, and we're going to have everything on our hands. Well, we're... Time. Dude, the fact that we're at home for this game. No excuses. Let's go. Let's go. This is it. It's possible. Beat it's a possible. playoff it's team and you might get scenario. in. scenario. The perfect scenario: beat the Houston, uh, beat the Houston Texans, and the Lions beat Minnesota on the same weekend. Oh. Uh, for some reason, I feel like it's going to go down to Week 17. Could you imagine this heartbreaker? We lose to the Redskins, and the Vikings lose to the Chicago Bears. Oh, oh. the the Vikings play the Bears. Yeah, on the last week. That's who we need to what? lose. Yeah. Imagine if they, like, sit Trubisky or something. Well, that, see, that's the thing. Because we beat the Rams, they actually have a chance to win the second spot for, for a bye. So it's going to be big. Look at that face. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, could you imagine? Could you imagine? Who is Chicago's backup? 
Chase, Chase Daniel. Imagine us sitting on the couch here for Chase Daniel oh, <laughs> on the Lord. last game of the year. Stop. That can't happen. I Dude, can't. I just imagine, if, imagine if Chase Daniel beat them and then we <laughs> lost to the Redskins. <laughs> I'm we're laughing, and we're going to be heartbroken in about two weeks. Bring on the Texans. Like Bring on the Texans. Yeah, you're right, dude. They're a good team, man. They're a great team. They're, they're good. Deshaun Watson is legit. Can I toss something out there? Go ahead. If you had a quarterback to choose from it, the, to start your franchise for the next 10 years, let me just lay out a few, all right? Okay. Because we're not going to go Brady. We're I'll, I'll rate these quick. Philip Rivers, right? Yeah. It, Forget those it's guys. Gone, yeah, it, it's literally going to be Pat Mahomes, Jared Goff, Deshaun Watson. Uh, you can, I'm just going young guns here. You can throw Dak Prescott in there if you wanted to. How about Carson Wentz? Is he in that argument? Is he in that realm of players? Number, oh, okay, you're saying number one. He's number one. But there, I'm just saying, for the people who think he's not the future, think about that. You're starting a franchise for 10 years. All right, for the next ten years, he's in the mix of those players that you want who are in the league now. Yeah, that's all I got. The only knock that's everyone has on Carson, the only knock everyone seems to have on Carson is his health, which is now turning into a reasonable conversation. No. Reasonable, fair, but here's we'll let my, it play can I out. Counter that? Can I counter that point? Yes. For the RG three comparison, if it was his knee three years in a row, I would sit back and say, okay, let's evaluate this, but. It, it's it's these weird injuries. So in college, it was his hand when his hand hit a helmet. Okay, whatever. And the the rib injury in preseason, he played 16 years his, or 16 games his first year. Then the the ACL happened, and yeah, he ran into the. And this year, the back, which is the most concerning, but it's not the same issue every single time. If it was the knee every year, I'd say we have a problem on our hands. It's football. It's competitive. It's tough at this level. He needs to work on maybe keeping himself a, a little bit protected more, but I would be more concerned if it was the same thing every year. And it's not. I'd take all them guys, though. you take Patrick, all what guys? Patrick Mahomes is here. Oh, yeah, no, dude, no doubt. But but hear Ooh. me out. Hear me out. Every Last year, watching Carson Wentz in his first year, you would have never expected that this would happen his second year, right? So it really is year to year. This dude was the MVP through 13 weeks of the season, and we would have never imagined it would get to the point last year. You said, oh, hey, in one year, Philadelphia is going to say, let's trade him and let him walk. You would never think that would happen. So this is Mahomes' first year. Wait until people have film on. Wait till all of that stuff comes out and see where he is next year, third year, fourth year kind of thing. Yeah. I, I don't – I personally – I'm not that harsh on Carson this year. At all. I, I don't. I don't. Be, I was. I was harsh on it. I thought he had to be better. He was missing yeah. deep throws. You could look at his statistics and say he had a fine year, which is true. But yeah, yeah there were, and I think that had to do with his back bother. Yeah, I, he he had no camp, no preseason, wasn't practicing with the first team until like the second week of the season. Those things matter. And even with that said, in those games where our defense collapsed, and even in a, lot, a couple of those games that we won. There were plenty of times this year where Carson went down the field and gave us a lead in the fourth quarter or tied a game late. The D, I, I recognize I, I'm trying to break the, this thing down as an Eagles fan. What's wrong? What's not wrong? Our defense has flat out folded so many times this year. Our, yes, you would like. There's been a couple of times in those situations where one or two first downs would have maybe saved the defense, but at the end of the day. I didn't feel like the offense was as big a deal as the end game defense. The end game defense has been the biggest issue with this team all season long in my Yeah, opinion. I agree. I mean, you can look at Carson against Dallas, right? In the first quarter or the first half was that fourth quarter, dude? Like it goes so unnoticed, but that fourth quarter was elite level. Elite level, and that's with a back problem. Nelson Aguilar on the two yard line. Like these throws were last year's Carson. But he needed to do that for four quarters and we haven't been able to put it together. I'll say this. Doug Peterson in the beginning of the year was throwing the football 42 times and running it 10. I, that's just – that doesn't work, and, and people are going to crush Carson for that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I hate to do this. I'm not trying to say anything. I want Foles in right now. He's the hot stick. Give it to him. Let's ride it. I'm all I'm all good for it. But put me on the wagon, baby. Put me on the wagon. To, I'm, with you, I'm with you, bro. I'm with you, bro. Dude, imagine letting Carson Wentz walk. Just imagine that. Nah, dude. You are crazy, bro. Nah, I'll be a Jaguars fan. 
I, I'd rather yeah, be a Jaguars I'd rather, fan. Well, yeah, Blake Bortles. I will not so, be the fan of a football team that walks away from Carson Wentz. No, sir. I agree. I agree. <laughs> so, I thought this was fun. I had a good time. We yeah, need to man. do this more often. We have to maybe talk some flyers next time. Mm. I know that's a hot Carter Hart, baby. No, we're not doing Feed right me now. Carter Hart, baby. I, 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 I can't wait to see it. It's, it, it's change. I need change. That's so you're it. Expecting this, this to just, we're going to win 20 games in a row. Now, nah, man, call him Marty. Call him Marty. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. Go Birds. We're going to beat Houston.